This is my Keychron Q3 review. Here I'm going to get straight to the point and keep this short as there isn't really anything special or different as it's just a TKL layout in Keychron's Q series. If you really wanted a more detailed breakdown of the Q series, you can watch my review on the Q2 65% keyboard afterwards, linked down below. Overall, here's the TLDR. It's got the same quality and design carried over from Q2. They carried on with the fixed issues from earlier versions of the Q1 75% keyboard, except it's a TKL priced at 149 US dollars. To be honest, I was really debating whether this was even worth a review. But before we get into that, a quick segment for a cable mod. If you're looking for some higher-end custom keyboard cables such as these, with powder-coated aviator connectors or even Limo-style cables, then check out Cable Mod. They have a wide range of colors to choose from, and they use a clean double-sleeving technique with Mod Flex as the first layer and then Mod Mesh as the second layer to provide long-lasting durability and unique texture. You may also choose your style of pro-coiled cables where connectors allow extra customizability if you wanted to mix and match different colors from both ends of the cable, or you can go with a classic style without a connector for a clean single line. Please check out my Cable Mod affiliate link down in the description if you're interested. In the box, you do get the keyboard obviously, a USB-C to C with a USB-A adapter cable, and some extra screws and gaskets. It's got the same gasket mount anatomy as the Q1 and Q2. There are 8 hex screws that hold the top and bottom case together that can be accessed from the bottom. You do get a steel plate by default, but you also have the options for FR4, polycarbonate, and brass. The PCB is hot swappable with south facing LEDs to support RGB for those who want it. The keyboard case also comes in the same color options as its predecessors, which are space gray, navy blue, and carbon black, which is the one I received here for review. A couple notable specs include the typing angle at 5.26 degrees and the weight, which comes in roughly 2 kilos, which equates to about 4.4 pounds. Now, the Q3 does come with a standard F12 layout, but there's also a knob version that comes in an F13 layout. Personally, I'm not a fan of the knob on a TKL, and I absolutely would never buy one like that, both for aesthetic and functional purposes. It's also compatible with Windows and Mac as you do have the toggle button up top next to the USB-C port, and you may also use it with VIA for any sort of remapping and key bindings. I'm going to jump into the sound test right now, and what you'll hear is the factory stock with Gadron Pro Brown linear switches, factory loop Gadron stabilizers, and key crunch keycaps as they sent it to me. As an enthusiast, of course, I'm going to mod it. I cleaned off the stock stabilizers and re-looped them myself with Crytox 205 Grade Zero and BDZ Grease, then use alpaca switches that are lubed and filmed with GMK Apollo. I also did a sound test using tape mod as well. So let's hear it.
There is some hollowness and ping in stock form. I would say the ping is less than the Q1, but more than the Q2. In my modifications, the Q3 sounds very clacky without the tape mod. With the two layers of tape mod, it sounds like bubble wrap. Additionally, I think the tape mod also helps reduce the ping and hollowness as well. In conclusion, as I mentioned, the Q3 doesn't really stand out or has anything unique to it. But it doesn't have to, because it's part of the Q series. So, I think there should be some uniformity in terms of its body design, which allows the user to pick whichever layout they like best. I've recommended the Q2 before for an entry-level 65% keyboard in terms of quality, so I can pretty much say the same for the Q3. Especially coming from me since I personally have a preference towards TKLs. Okay, that's all for this video. Let me know what you think of the Q3 down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time.